Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm not going to be on here long, but I did uh, run across another mass shooting that I want to discuss today. If you have any children in the room, please, please do not listen at this video around children. Uh, it's not for children today. It's for adults only. Uh, what I want to discuss is that this was another mass shooting in Louis, Louisville, Kentucky at the old National Bank. A 25-year-old Connor worked at the bank and decided to use a AR-15 and shoot his co-workers and five co-workers are deceased and eight or nine people was wounded and taken to the hospital um so right now i just want to look at some of the videos and then we'll come back and discuss it because I wanted to know what made him snap on this day. Here to Old National Bank, there are crosses set up on the other side. We have now learned that another victim has been released. Three remain hospitalized right now. Rose and floors surround the Louisville Bank where five people killed Joshua Barrett, Thomas Elliott, because this is Louisville. This shooter, 25 year old surgeon, 15 surgeon, who started then got a full time. Job. Never would have thought in a million years that this would have happened. Officers arrived minutes after being dispatched and exchanged gunfire with the shooter, killing him. Police say rookie officer Nicholas Wilt was shot in the head and had brain surgery. It was his fourth shift as police officer, according to officials. This isn't about partisan politics. This is about life and death. Louisville's elected leaders say it's yet another example that the state and the country need tougher gun laws. We know this shooter purchased an AR-15 rifle on April 4th. We know he left, we know he texted or called at least one person to let them know he was suicidal and contemplating harm. But we don't have tools on the books to deal with someone who injured him or to others. Officer Wilt is among those still in the hospital right now in critical but stable condition. Another officer injured, Corey Galloway. He suffered a graze wound. Police say he was the one who killed the shooter. Any moment now, police will release by live in Louisville. Lindsay Watts, Rob and Judy, back to you. Okay. Okay, that was one. I want to uh, listen to one more before I actually discuss it. Um, my heart goes out to the police officer family. It's got to be devastating and heartbroken. He was a rookie. shooter on the, the site. I just watched it. A video conference call giving a bank employee across town a terrifying view as the gunman opened fire. Those inside Old National Bank calling seconds later, giving police crucial details. Eight or nine people have been shot. Uh-huh. Are you with any of them? Yes, but I'm in a closet hiding. As the gunman opened fire on police in agonizing wait. 
Is that shot fired? Yeah. Okay, just stay quiet. And then a call from a woman identifying herself as the shooter's mother. This is mother. I'm going to tell you the money is right now. Oh, my Lord. Who heard from her son's roommate that something was wrong. He's nonviolent. Mm-hmm. He's never done anything. Okay, and you don't believe he owns guns? I know he doesn't own any guns. His mother unaware, he purchased a rifle just six days earlier. The family telling NBC News overnight, no words can express our sorrow, anguish, and horror at the unthinkable harm our son Connor inflicted on innocent people. Adding he had mental health challenges, but there were never any warning signs or indications he was capable of this shocking act. In just seven minutes, nine were injured and five lives were lost. Tonight, memories of the victims flooding in, including 40-year-old Joshua Barrick, a husband and father of two. The last thing he said to me was, I'll do whatever you need me to do. And that's just, that's the type of guy he was. Tonight, a community ripped apart by violence, coming together to heal. Morgan Chesky, NBC News, Louisville. We're turning 40 and you get the gifts. As a- All right. Um, I am so heartbroken right now. I literally have no words. Uh, I don't even know what to say because it's like every time we turn around, it's another mass shooting. Um, Mental health is real. I hear people discussing, I I don't think the AR-15s need to be on the streets. I think they are literally made for war. If you're not in a war, why do we need those out? Uh, I do believe that people have a right to bear arms and to protect their homes and protect themselves. But we don't need AR-15 to protect ourselves. Um, I don't think that is needed. Uh, So we're saying tragic struck again in Louisiana. I think at this time they were saying that uh, five people was deceased. They thought it was six injured in this mass shooting. But uh, now I'm thinking it's eight or nine people that was injured. This is the old National Bank in Kentucky where the incident occurred. Do we know? uh, I'm glad. One thing I am glad about is that the roommate called the mother and say your son he did take action and the mother did take action um she didn't believe her son had a gun one thing i will say we don't know what our children will do and so we've got to stop saying what our children won't do because what we say they won't do that's what they will do Mental health is real. A lot of times, people don't know what to do when somebody is faced with a mental illness. Um, It's a tragedy, and nobody knows what to do. The best thing you can do, if you see somebody that is truly faced or they're saying things that they don't need to say, that are faced with the mental health illness, that are saying they want to go and harm somebody, please call 911. That's the first thing that you need to do. Uh, Don't take it lightly. Please call 911 because mental health is real. And a lot of police officers have not been trained to deal with mental health illness. Um, Some have been trained. But when it comes to something like this, the best thing you can do is call 911. So what I will, uh, he was 25 years old. He worked in the bank. Why would you bring an AR-15 to work to shoot your coworkers? Did somebody bully him? What made him trip? That's my number one thing I be wanting to know is what make people snap. He snapped. 
you're going to kill your co-workers. He killed five of them. This was planned because he live streamed the attacks before he killed them. The two police officers that got on the scene, one was shot in the head. I, and, and, ah, that's a hard pill to swallow to hear that somebody was shot in the head. He's in critical, critical condition. The other police officer who shot him and took his life, thank God, um, I think he was injured as well. But he was able to shoot him to stop him from harming any more people. He had an AR-15 assault rifle. And uh, that was something that he did not need to have. He just didn't need it. Uh, do we need to get them off the streets? Yes, we do. Nobody needs to be. And I know people don't like me saying that. We do have a right to bear arms. We have a right to protect our families. I don't think we need an AR-15 automatic. that's just going off shooting so many rounds that are killing people. So many people lost their lives because he went in and bought this legally he bought it legally you know it wasn't an illegal gun but uh everybody was taken um to the university of louisville hospital and the chief medical officer was jason smith and i assume um uh, the police officer name was Nicholas Will. He had just got out of training. He had just graduated. It wasn't 10 days earlier. He was a rookie. And he was so dedicated to his job that he put his life on the line. Um, I don't know what to say on that. This is the 15th mass shooting in the country this year. Two weeks ago, a student killed three children and three adults at the Christian Elementary Elementary School in Nashville, Tennessee. That was about 160 miles south of Kentucky. One of the people who lost their lives was Kentucky governor's um, friend. It was a very close friend and he took it dear to his heart because he lost a very good friend who he say he wouldn't have been in the law school. Uh, Tommy Elliott was his best friend. He said he helped him build his law career he helped him become governor. He gave him great advice about being a good father. A lot of people was touched and hurt uh, by these. And that's what people fail to realize. When somebody lose their life, a lot of people are hurt by this. According to the mayor, of Louisiana, uh, excuse me, according to the mayor of Louisville, Kentucky, he said that they've already lost 40 people to gun violence in Louisville this year. 40 people to gun violence in Louisville this year. Um, that's that's awful you know and we are not even six months into the year 
this is what the fourth month and they've already lost 40 people to gun violence that's heartbreaking because it's somebody's sister or somebody brother or somebody husband or somebody's child has lost their lives due to gun violence and i hear a lot of people say well it's not the guns that are killing people it's the people that are killing people and they are right but it is certain weapons that are out here that we don't need on the streets. I think those weapons belong in the army if you're out on the war field. I do not believe that they belong on the streets where anybody can just purchase them and like this young man did, went to work and you're killing your co-workers. Um, what made him snap that day? I don't know. I have no clue what made him snap. But I do know from what I'm reading, it was planned. He planned to do this. So is that really mental illness? Or is that just somebody out here that's being evil and want to harm other people? For whatever his reason was of wanting to harm his co-workers, it's not right. If you want to take your own life, take your own life, but don't harm other innocent people that have nothing to do with whatever you're going through in life. So to hear that this police officer was shot in the head, uh, wow, that's deep. So I'm praying that this police officer will recover I know he's in critical condition. I know he's fighting for his life. And for the people um, uh, Delhi Bank shoot. Oh, this was uh, another this was another um, article I had brought up the deadly bank shooting and it was just basically saying that president biden had came out and spoke on it and i guess he was definitely speaking on uh this the rifles the a the ar-15 rifles do we really need them out on the streets this was the shooter uh, and I put in there, Connor, he was 20, 25 years old, 25 years old. I commend the police officers who stopped the threat of other innocent people losing their lives. He live streamed this, which told me if you live streamed it so everybody can see it then this was something planned this was something that you were meaning to do is to go and hurt your co-workers i don't know if you people think it's a joke but though it's not funny at all it's not funny and no they're right uh it's not the guns that are killing people it's the people that are doing it and it's mental illness and wow if you feel that someone close to you is, like I say, is talking about harming somebody, please call 911. Because you can talk to people, but when they have it in their heart that they are insisting that they're going to go out here and harm somebody, then somebody needs to be aware of it. And starting with 911. uh this police officer he was just 26 years old so he was just as young just starting the police force just coming out of training 
And so I think we definitely need to send a prayer out for him. I think he's here with the mayor and the governor or, or And they are just saying that he remains in critical condition. For the five people, I have four up here. Uh, for the five people who lost their lives, uh, my heart goes out to the families. I'm definitely praying for the family's uh, strength tonight um, because they lost their loved ones. And all they did was go to work. So it's like we're not even safe going to work because we don't know what is going on in our co-workers' head. I say, uh, please be safe. Uh, I'm praying for the families that family members were injured the nine, eight or nine that was wounded as well. Hopefully they will recover soon, but definitely for the people who lost their lives, these people would never come home to their families. They'll never come home again. And all they did was go to work. So do we need AR-15s out on the streets? No, we don't. Uh, I feel like they belong in the war. And if you want to shoot up a lot of people, just go in the service. They have a uh, war going on all the time. Uh, I feel like that's where those guns belong. They don't belong on the streets where people with the wrong intention can purchase them. Uh, everybody who has them does not have wrong intentions, but we are having a lot of people out here that has the wrong intention. They want to take out a lot of people, and that's not fair, and it's not right. So my heart goes out to the families who's lost loved ones, uh, whose family members may have been in the hospital at this time recovering. Uh, from being wounded because somebody decided to bring an AR-15 to work and wanted to live stream it to harm somebody's family, somebody's brother, sister, mom, father, dad, um, it's sad. My heart just goes out to everybody that was affected by this tragic mass shooting. 